severe obstacle. I will destroy you. Winning is my world. Defeat can never have it. They can knock me down. I will rise again. I won't stay down. I will rise again. They might win a battle, but they will never win my war. Winning is my world. Defeat can never have it. They can knock me down. I will rise again. I won't stay down. I will rise again. They might win the battle, but they will never win my war. And here I am, still standing, still going, stronger than yesterday, wiser than ever, better every day. What's up everybody, I'm John Bear, and in this video I'm gonna talk about how I shot that boxer workout video. The guy in the video is a Taekwondo black belt and I shot it for his Instagram. It was a really fun experience for me and this guy is a personal trainer as well so we had access to the gym. So here was an opportunity for me to shoot an awesome talent at an awesome location. So real quick, in this video I'm gonna give you six tips of how to shoot a workout video such as this one. My first tip would be to shoot a wide medium and close-up shot of pretty much every action you see. This gives you a lot of room to edit and to add some more depth to the video. The wide shots help to show what sort of exercise he's doing or where he is located. The medium shots are a little more personal and then the close-up can be either a very dramatic close-up of his face or his hands or whatever he's interacting with, whether it's his feet or his hands whatever he's striking or kicking. When you mix these three types of shots in, you can have basically a scene. One important way to make the video more intense is to have fast cuts, but you don't want to skip to a different scene too fast. So the action of him punching the punching bag can actually be three separate shots. My second tip is don't shoot everything in slow motion. I've seen a lot of videos online where pretty much every shot is slow motion. And what you'll quickly realize is that it tends to make the whole video very mellow and slow. And sometimes you might want to go for that if you're making a vacation video or something like that, or. Who knows? But this is a workout video and I wanted to communicate how this guy was going on a personal war. But you'll notice that I used slow-mo a few times. Slow-mo is very good if you use it sparingly. Use it to increase the drama, not to slow the video down. Number three, stick to the 180 degree rule. This is not a specific rule to this video, it's more like a general rule that I would recommend you to follow pretty much as often as you can because this really goes a long way to make your video more cinematic. And it's one of those sort of invisible elements that you don't realize you need unless it's not there. When you're shooting with a high shutter speed, everything becomes a little jittery. And for the untrained eye, you might not even notice it, but you definitely feel it. When you stick with the 180 degree rule, you're gonna have that really nice smooth motion that really underlines every cinematic movie. Tip number four, turn off all the lights in the gym. Now I realize you might not be able to do this. There might be other people working out in the gym, but in my case, I had the freedom to do that because the gym was closed and we got to use the location. And the reason I wanted to shut off all the lights in the gym is because I wanted to use my own lights and also use the daylight from the big windows. I did this not just to have more control of the lights, but also so that I can more easily follow the 180 degree rule for shutter speeds. The thing you'll notice when you're using practical lights is that you'll usually get a lot of flickering and all the lights are different. So you might not even notice that some lights are flickering and some aren't until maybe you're editing the video when it's too late to fix it. So for me, it's much safer to just turn off all the practical lights and bring your own lights. Now I get it, if you're a run and gun handheld shooter, this might sound like a deal breaker, but that's actually what I am as well. I'm a run and gun handheld shooter. So what I did, I used the practical lights from the windows, but I also brought like tiny little pocket lights. I have another video on these pocket lights in the description, you can check those out. But essentially you wanna avoid light flickering because for me that's a dead giveaway that you're an amateur and basically that's gonna lower the value of your video immensely. Tip number five, Keep your shoot short. This is an athlete after all, and he's gonna be working out for you to take these shots. And sometimes that's gonna be very tiring in the long run. So for me, the shoot for this entire video took about an hour. So what I did when I was getting my wide, medium, and close-up shots, I was actually just making him do the same exercise for maybe 30 seconds. And then I was just shooting wide, medium, and close-up in the same take. This way the talent doesn't have to do every exercise three times or more and you can wrap up the shoot much sooner. After all, you don't want to leave your talent completely exhausted by the time you get to the last exercise. To make it quicker, you can make a list of exercises you want him to perform and then just go through the list. And tip number six, 
mix static shots with moving shots. Basically, with this whole gimbal craze going on in the world, everybody wants to have a sliding shot or moving shot or whatever. Those shots are great for the wide shots. Remember that they're not necessary. In fact, I'd argue that the moving shots are best used sparingly. It goes back to the whole thing about confusing the audience of like, where are we? What are we doing? Having static shots where the camera doesn't move at all, for me, those types of shots help anchor the audience. It sort of grounds you a little bit more. So definitely mix both in, but don't make it overwhelmingly moving wide shots. And also you can basically save your money. You don't have to buy a gimbal. Imagine that. As a bonus tip, uh, if your camera is nicely stabilized, you can do what I did. It's basically you move yourself with his motions. And you can tell I did that in this pull-up shot, in this bench shot. And it sort of just adds a little more sort of personal dynamic feel to the whole thing. Definitely not necessary, it's like a personal style kind of thing, but I thought it was pretty cool and it worked out pretty well in my edit. So that's it, thank you so much for watching. These are my six tips of how to shoot some epic workout B-roll. If you like this video, leave a comment down below, tell me what you liked, tell me if there's any tips you thought I might have forgotten. And if you wanna see more of my content, you can hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.